Joanna Simpson here at Quantlines International in London. Joining me now is Paul Billicon, Visiting Professor at Imperial College. Thank you very much for joining me today. Thank you very much, it's a pleasure. <laughs> and the topic of your presentation today is Harry Markowitz's 1952 portfolio optimization model. What are the limitations of the model and ways of thinking about them mathematically and statistically that you like to get across? There are a number of limitations and uh, Harry Markowitz was certainly aware of them. Uh, one of the primary limitations is uh, non-stationarity of financial time series. So in order to use this model, you need to estimate the parameters. And non-stationarity as always gets in the way. And uh, therefore, it's important to be able to deal with station uh, non-stationarity. Uh, and it's not just any old kind of uh, non-stationarity. There are stylized facts. Um, it's a special kind of non-stationarity. And if we can deal with this, uh, we can allocate resources much more efficiently. And how do you think these limitations can be remedied? Yeah, so uh, one of the um, aspects of the talk that I'm presenting today is that um, in other areas, especially in AI, especially in uh, areas such as reinforcement learning, people have found certain solutions um, to these problems. And uh, what we are doing uh, is we are applying these solutions uh, to um, what was previously studied primarily under portfolio management. So we're basically, it's a cross-disciplinary talk and we use, for example, certain approaches from uh, multi-armed bandits to um, address uh, the stationarity, non-stationarity issues. And you've been working with AI technology for many years now. How do you see it affecting the workforce in quantitative finance? Yeah, well, it will have a uh, complex set of effects and we are seeing some of them already. Uh, one is perhaps uh, the change of methodology that AI will uh, perhaps replace or um, uh, complement some of the toolkit that we're currently using. Uh, it may also have uh, certain negative effects such as uh, explainability. Uh, the, it's an important subject in uh, AI to be able to come up with explainable artificial intelligence methods to understand exactly what's going on, why uh, the AI methods come up with the uh, recommendations that they do and uh, there has been progress in this area. Uh, but uh, also it's how it will affect the jobs because uh, certain aspects of the quant uh, job will be uh, doable by AI, right? So the question is how do you really make sure that the effect on the job market uh, among quants is actually positive? How can you actually make sure that we can work with these technologies in a kind of um, synergetic kind of way? And if there was one thing you could change about how AI is currently used in finance, what would it be? Yeah, I, I think uh, explainability is, is this key thing that need, needs to be addressed. It's being able to explain exactly what's going on, why the decisions are being made the way they are. And that's critical for us to be able to retain agency when we work with these models. So to create agency for us so that we don't just hand over all the decision making power to AI but we somehow understand exactly how the decision-making process um, uh, takes place. Paul Billicon, thank you very much for your thank time. Thank you very much. Thank you.